Hello, welcome to AMCI Saturday Study Session, or SSS. I'm Mrs. J, Curriculum Director here at AMCI, and I am delighted to present AMCI Lead Instructor, Ms. Tamika, along with her guest. Without further ado, let's get started. Take it away, Ms. Tamika. Good morning, good morning. How are you beautiful coders? Let me see y'all in that chat. We've got some intake to decipher through and code. I know I'm gonna see some good stuff from you coders. I see Amy, I see Stacy in there, Shabaku, Natalie, Rasha. Good morning. I have Daniel in there, Sharnita, Stacy. It is indeed my pleasure to join you guys. For those of you who are, are joining me the first time in, in Saturday study session, welcome, welcome, welcome. And you know, I've got one of my favorite folks that is part of our, our dynamic team, but she hangs out with me on Saturday, all right? You know, I'm bringing Miss Andrea to the floor. Come on, lady. Good morning, good morning, coders. Welcome back. I see some familiar faces. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us this Saturday morning. Miss Tamika has a lot of great stuff prepared, and I will see you guys in the chat. Thank you, Miss Andrea. I tell you, I'm seeing some familiar, familiar names. I'm going to say, quote unquote, faces that I haven't seen in a while because I get you guys at the very beginning and then I see people at the very end when you're rounding it out and turning the corner to get ready for that final test. And I know you're going to be ready and we're going to get you there, okay? Hey, Natalie. <laughs> All right, guys, I know you guys are ready. I know Rosh is ready as well, Natalie. I think Shalina is too. I'm pretty sure sharnita has got her favorite pencils and pens, and I know that Rosh is gonna bring it today. All right, Shabakun, I know you're ready. I know you got everything chunked, and Miss Stacy, I know you're ready too. Everybody got your beverage of choice. I've got me a little hot latte going on and a little water on the side. All right, so here's our agenda for today. We've done those introductions. You know myself, Miss Tamika, and you know Miss Andrea. We are gonna refine your AMCI test taking techniques and your skills. We're gonna review those steps to solving that board scenario. And just remember your keyword concepts. And then we are going to be doing several time scenarios. I try to put in as many concepts as I can so that we can really make good use of these two hours that you are so graciously giving us. Okay, so this is precious time. I wanna make it well worth your investment. Our copyright, CPT copyright 2021, American Medical Association, all rights are reserved. CPC is a registered trademark of the AAPC. AAPC content found within this presentation is copyright of AAPC, keyword concept, FTR, Chun, AMCI, FAB7, Flip, Tap are trademarks of AMCI. All right, I know y'all are ready for some time scenarios. And Rasha already just told me, sure, we're ready. I know you guys are ready. All right, so we're going to be giving you guys two and a half minutes for each scenario. After Miss Andrea reads them, then your time will start. And then I'll come in and give you some explanations and give you some pointers and tips, okay? I know we're ready to do this. All right, Shalini, I see you're ready too. All right, Miss Andrea, you have the floor. All right, we the patient is here to see us about some skin tags on her neck and both underarms. She has had those these lesions for some time. They are irritated by her clothing, itch, and at times have a burning sensation to them. We discussed treatment options along with risk. Informed consent was obtained and we proceeded. We removed 16 skin tags from the right axilla, 16 skin tags from the left axilla, 10 from the right side of the neck and 17 from the left side of the neck. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? We have A, 11057, D23.5, D23.4, B, 11200, 11200, um, modifier 51 times 5, D23.5, D23.4, C, 11200, 11201 times 4, 11201 modifier 52, 
L98.8, 91.8, I'm sorry, and D11200, 11201 times 5, and L98.8. You got this, coders. All right, I see some good answers coming in the chat. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and unpack it. I gave you guys just a little bit extra time because one thing about study group is that I try to cover as much as I can, but at the same time, um, I like to give you time to work through it um, and to get your get your timing down. So while I give you two and a half minutes, I oftentimes will just give you just a little bit more uh, so you can get your answer in the chat because I like to see uh, what everybody is putting in so that I know where I need to concentrate as well. So I'm looking at the chat and I'm, I'm taking it in myself and then I can gauge what I need to hone in on for you, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get going on it. Somebody was asking me about the keywords. Sure, if time permits, once you give us your answer, once you've gotten your answer, if we haven't called time, then sure, go ahead and place those keywords in there because um, I know you're writing them down. You're obviously uh, looking at various keywords in order to get to the answer, okay? But Write down your keywords, definitely. I know you're you know, writing them down as you solve and then come 
you know, get to your answer. And then if time permits, yeah, let me see your keywords so I can see what, what you're taking a look at, okay? All right, so we're gonna get rolling on this one. All right, your answer is D, okay? So I had a few of you got there and then, I had a split between, I had some Bs, I had some Cs. I'm going to show you how to get to D and what you need to look at when you are talking about skin tags, as well as things that you need to really train your eye to see with these particular codes. All right, so we have skin tags, the neck, both underarms. They've removed 16 skin tags from the right axilla, 16 skin tags from the left axilla, and 10 from the right side of the neck, as well as 17 from the left side of the neck. One thing about skin tags, you want to keep up with how many you got, all right? And, and all, of you, all of you understand that part. So I know based on the answers that most of you gave, it is a matter of understanding the code language for this one. All right, so we have the right axilla. We've got 16. We've got 16 from the left, 10 from the right neck, 17 from the left neck for a total of 59. That gets to be a, a, a little tricky when you start reading this code language, but we're going to unpack it starting from the top. This code family, the parent is 11055. This is for pairing or cutting a benign hyperkeratotic lesion. We already know right off when you start reading your code uh, language and you know this right here is incorrect, anything that falls beneath it, in this case, this 11057, it's going to be wrong. So use that technique as well. You already have your book chunned. When the common code language of this parent is incorrect, anything that falls beneath, it's out of there. All right. So all of you pretty much knew that. We're looking for skin tags, okay? In case you missed it, I'd love to give you some emphasis there. Yeah, skin tags, all right? So we're going to get rid of that one. We're going to take a look here. We know this is where we, we've got to concentrate on. This parent is 11200, removal of skin tags, multiple fibrocutaneous tags, any area. What does that tell us? We don't have to worry about that it was the right axle of the neck, any, any of that. We know they're removing skin tags, any area. Here is the catch. Up to and including 15 lesions. All right, that's important to know. So we know 11200, that takes care of 15 of those lesions. We're going to need this add-on code. This is taking care of each additional 10 lesions, all right? There we go. Each additional 10 lesions or part thereof. All right. There we go. Or part thereof. This is critical. What that's telling you is we, for code 11201, it takes care of 10 lesions. But if you have a situation where you have, say, 11, uh, you have 15 plus you have one more. Say you had 16. This takes care of anything from one to 10. That's what I'm trying to say. One to 10, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be exactly 10 lesions in order for you to have to use this add-on code. Once you get over 15 lesions, you've got to account for each additional 10 lesions or part thereof. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly 10 lesions. It could be anything from one to 10. Does that make sense? For everybody because I know everybody was trying to figure what all right B we're taking it off the table because even though it's times five which is what we need to account for what's left over we don't append modifier 51 to add on codes all right make a note of that if you haven't if you don't have it in your book or you can put it at the top of the page but definitely in in your in the flap, in the front part of the CPT manual, that 51 modifier, write it in red. Do not append that to an add-on code. All right, so, so be clear with that. Now we take a look. Now we've added them up. We have 59 minus 15. All right, that's this code. All right, so now we have 44 left over. So we know we take care of 10, we have, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how we're going to break it down. 15 plus 40. There we go. 15 for that one, 40 for this one. Okay. That gives us what? 55. But 
we have a little over that. We've got four over that. So we're going to have to use that code one more time, and we can because we have part thereof. That's how we do that. We're not going to put a 52 on there to try to reduce the services to say, ah, oh, we didn't quite have 10. No, the code language takes care of it. When the code language takes care of it, you're not worried about the modifiers. It's taking care of anything that's left over, meaning anything that's less than 10. But we need that additional one because we've got four left over. All right, so we take that one off. That's how we get here. Yeah, we've got 65, and that's okay. We've got to account for 59, and that's okay too. All right, so how is everybody with, with that one? Okay, let me... I'm not forgetting about our code. We've got a code for, all right, the, 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 the skin tags, and we're going to have code L91.8. That's where we get that from. I do want to bring your attention to the fact that when you're in CPT coding with me, I will um, tell you where I'm pulling this code from, but I don't concentrate on that code uh, from the ICD-10 uh, manual unless I need to break a tie, because once you find the right answer, you want to answer it and move on. Do not spend time proving that you're even more correct. Once you get the right answer, you move on. So stay in this CPT manual as much as you can. And then if you need to break a tie, because that's the, the last thing between two viable answers, then you start digging in the ICD-10 CM manual, okay? All right, how are my coders? How you doing? I just need to know you. You're with me. You can grab a screenshot if you if you need to. So does everybody understand that or part thereof? That is taking care of the leftover. All right. That that that's another way of saying it. It takes care of the leftover, even if you got something left over here, which we did. Okay, we've got those four left over. We can use that code again. And right here. We know the parenthetical guidelines are telling us use these two things together. So that's more of confirmation. Yeah, we're on the right track. All right. Okay. We're going to keep it moving. I'm going to bring Miss Andrea on. I know you guys love these long ones. Okay. <laughs> I've missed you too, Soma. All right. Let me remind you as well. Remember when you're doing certain scenarios that involve the integumentary system, remember things that are bundled, okay? So that will help you with your code selection. Remember things that are bundled. All right, so here we go. All right, Ms. Andre, you have the floor, and after she finishes, she's going to give you these answers and then read that great scenario. You'll have two and a half minutes. All right, coders, you got this. Just take a breath. All right, we have A, 15758. B, 14301, C, 14301 with 11606, modifier 51, and D, 15738 with 11606, modifier 51. A 45-year-old male with a previous biopsy positive for malignant melanoma presents for definitive excision of the lesion. After induction of general anesthesia, the patient is placed supine on the OR table, the left knee prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion. IV antibiotics are given. Patient had previous MRSA infection. The previous excisional biopsy site on the left knee measured approximately four centimeters and was widely eclipsed with a 1.5 centimeter margin. The excision was taken down to the underlying patellar fascia. Hemostasis was achieved via electrocautery. The resulting defect was 11 centimeters by 5 centimeters. Wide advancement flaps were created inferiorly and superiorly using electrocautery. This allowed skin edges to come together without tension. The wound was closed using interrupted 2-0 monocryl and two retention sutures were placed using number one proline. Skin was closed with a stapler. What CPT codes is are reported? You got this, coders.
All right, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of good answers in there. Yeah, I'm seeing some folks already having some aha moments in there. OK, we're going to go ahead and unpack this one. And we had a, 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 li a little bit of a split. Um, folks were going between B and D, and that's that's all right. This is just where you need to be. We're just fine tuning it. So I don't want any of you to be thinking, and I should have gotten that. Hey, you are going to have it. We're going to unpack it so that anytime you see something like this again, you are going to be spot on. OK, so we're going to point you in the right direction so that going forward, anything that's similar to this, you're going to have it. All right, so here we go. We've got answer B. Yeah, we do. And I know some of you that, that got D, you're like, wait a minute, wait a doggone minute. Hey, we're going to unpack it. You're going to be clear. Here we go. 45-year-old male, biopsy positive for malignant melanoma, excision of this lesion. Okay, left knee was prepped and draped. They had an excisional biopsy of that left knee that measured approximately four centimeters with a 1.5 centimeter margin. Um, they had the excision taken down to the patella fascia. This defect that resulted was 11 by 5 centimeters, and they had wide advancement flaps that were created. Mm, what are some what are some 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 key words that we need to hone in on? OK, remember those key words. It will drive you to the proper code selection because you start hearing things like flaps and things like that. You're thinking, hey, what is right there? Advance. But this is an advancement flap. OK, so we look here at this first code. Uh, 15733, this is the parent of this code family. Remember what I told you, as soon as this parent common code language is correct, again, the common code language, again, those things that happen before that semicolon, we know anything that falls beneath that is incorrect. So although, yeah, we need something with the lower extremity, this common code language, it makes it incorrect. So 15738, that one's gone. That takes care of D. All right. All right. We keep going. And we have this free fascial flap. Again, I know this one can be kind of like, wait a minute, they're mentioning a flap, but this is an advancement flap. OK, so this is free fascial flap. They're talking about all this stuff, but we need an advancement flap. See, even before you start digging in. Ms. Tamika, again, your screen isn't advancing. Oh, man, y'all know. OK, let me tell y'all something about me. I will pause my screen because I'm tinkering back here. Thank you, Miss Andre. And you know how I do. All right. So let me let me pause it and go back. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Y'all know I'm just over here having me a good old time. OK, I'm just talking and everybody's wondering what am I saying? So give me one sec. Let me. Let me take my screen back to where we need to go so you guys can see what I'm saying. All right. So one sec. I tell you what, I was just a talking, talking, talking. All right, let's do it that way. OK, here we go. I got to bring you guys to where I am. All right, there we go. And I know better. I have my screen over here, but I'm looking at my main screen. OK, here we go. So we've got the keywords, 45 year old male, this biopsy positive malignant melanoma, excision of this lesion from the left knee. And we've got this excisional biopsy of the left knee that was approximately four centimeters with a 1.5 centimeter margin. And this excision was taken down to the patella fascia. And this defect that resulted is 11 by five centimeter. We have a wide advancement flap that was created. OK, now the answer is B. Some of you got there, but a lot of you chose D. And I know hearing flap and all that stuff, you immediately think this is a flap, but this is an advancement flap. So we have muscle cutaneous or fascio cutaneous flap. None of that happened. We are looking for a advancement flap. So remember, any common code language before the semicolon that's incorrect, 
everything that falls beneath it that's dependent on that language would be incorrect as well. So therefore, because we're looking for an advancement flap, this is a muscle or myocutaneous flap. No, yeah, the lower extremity, but the language, the common language is incorrect. So 15738, which is in D, that one's incorrect. I'm doing all sorts of stuff today, y'all. Hold on. All right, there we go. I got to shake the Christmas off, y'all. All right, so here we go. Then we move on to code 15758. This is a free fascial flap. Again, we need to be matching up those keywords. We are looking for an advancement flap. So just from keywords alone, yeah, 15758, that one's off the table. All right, okay. So is everybody with me so far? Now we've gotten it down just with yeah advancement flap that's one of those keywords for an att that's right shabakun when you see advancement flap and again if you've chunned that book put those keywords on the proper code page so you start looking when you get to those particular codes this is what you're looking for. This advancement flap is, is boom. That is your signal. This is an ATT, okay? This is an adjacent tissue transfer. So now we've gotten down to B and C. So what do we do with that? Well, we're going to take a look at this thing. We have code 14301. This is an ATT, an adjacent tissue transfer or rearrangement any area with a defect of 30.1 to 60 square centimeters. That's good stuff. And we know it's gotta be one of the other because that's all we have uh, remaining with B and C anyway. Any area, so we're covered, even though we're talking about the knee, any area, this is what we concentrate on is the defect part. All right, now, what are the FTRs? We're gonna code it according to the body area. The excisions are bundled, all right? adjacent tissue transfers. They're a type of closure. Here are your keywords, ATT, transfer, XYZ plasty. If you hear stretching or pulling, advancement flap, a yin yang rotation, okay? That, when we talk about keywords, certain keywords are pivotal. So be very deliberate in the keywords that you're honing in on, all right? So, we know advancement flap, we're where we need to be. We're talking about an ATT. The defect is 30 by 30 to 60 square centimeters. We know that this one is 55 centimeters because here's the other thing, the resulting defect, 11 by five centimeters. 11 times five, 55. We're right where we need to be, okay? So we know we can use 14301. Here's a sticking point here, all right? If you chose C and some of you did, why don't we use this one? Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you, okay? With an advancement flap, okay? With this excision, our, our um, excisions are bundled. Yeah, that's right, Shalini. The, the excisions are bundled. So you can see why it's key when you notice what the pivotal keyword is, it will get you to the right page and you need to have these FTRs there. So then you know, hey, I wouldn't choose that because this is bundled, all right? So that's why we're just gonna go with that one. The excision of the malignant lesion, yeah, it happened, but it's bundled, all right? So that's why we're not choosing 11606 with the 51 modifier, although it happened, it's bundled with this particular code. All right, so 14301 is the answer. All right, how are we feeling? Just take a breath. I know it's, it's something to take in, but definitely notice those key words, okay? Notice the key words is, is, is what I wanna stress to you. So, so now you understand why D wouldn't be it, okay? Because we're talking about an ATT. We're talking about an adjacent tissue transfer when we start talking about this particular scenario. All right. Okay. Grab a screenshot if you need it.
All right, good. I see somebody said, aha. I sure hope we've got some more aha moments. Yeah, all right, Amy and Shalini. Yes, I need some aha moments in here, but this is where we do it, y'all. This is where we do it, and that's why we're here. All right, Miss Andrea, you have the floor, lady. All right, I think I'm gonna bring Miss Andrea back in a sec. Is everybody hearing me? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna start reading it and Miss Andrea will, will, will chime in in just a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start with your answers. We have A, 19125 with an RT modifier. We have B, 11400 with an RT modifier. C, 19125 with an RT modifier, followed by 19285, and finally D, 19120 with an RT modifier. A localization wire placement in the lower outer aspect of the right breast was performed by a radiologist the day prior to this procedure. During this operative session, the surgeon created an incision through the wire track and the wire track was followed down to its entrance into breast tissue. A nodule of breast tissue was noted immediately adjacent to the wire. This entire area was excised by sharp dissection, sent to pathology and returned as a benign lesion. Bleeders were cauterized and subcutaneous tissue was closed with 3O vicryl. Skin edges were approximated with 4O subcuticular sutures and adhesive strips were applied. The patient left the operating room in satisfactory condition. What is or are the correct coder codes for the surgeon's service? All right, I want to really, really impart to you to give you a little, a little nudge here, okay? Remember the who, what, when, where, how. So who are we coding for, all right? I've said too much, all right? I want you to start with that. You're gonna have two and a half minutes and your time, it starts now. You got this coder.
All right, coders, how we doing? I've been giving you guys just a few more seconds here. All right, I'm loving what I'm seeing. I think many of you took my hint. If you if you didn't quite get there, that is okay. All right, that, that's why you're here. I'm gonna get you there. I love it. Great keywords, guys. For some of you, if we if we haven't commented on the keywords and we've just been checking the answers, I'm telling you now, great, great keywords. I see your keywords in there, Raja and Natalie. Wonderful job, guys. Really good job. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead. We have answer A. Yeah, we do. All right, so we've got this localization wire placement of the right breast. It was performed by the radiologist the day before the procedure. Uh, the surgeon is the one who created the incision with the through the wire tract uh, with the entrance into the breast tissue. Uh, nodule was noted. The entire area was thus excised by sharp dissection and returned as a benign lesion. Now, how do we code for the surgeon's services? Yeah, many of you caught my hint. Yeah, and I think you would have gotten it anyway. So we are coding uh, according to what happened with the breast tissue. All right, so we have for code 11400 excision, benign lesion, including the margins, except skin tags, unless listed otherwise, of the trunk, arms, or legs that are excised. We are looking for some breast tissue okay this is talking about the trunk arms or legs this should be red okay all right so that is my mistake on my outline right there this should be red of course we are excising something but we're in the wrong location this is trunk arms or legs so 11400 yeah that's not correct we're gonna keep going we have excision of a cyst or fibroadenoma, other benign or malignant tumor, okay? We're simply looking for some breast tissue, okay? So we're gonna take 19120 off because it's coding for the excision of a cyst or other benign tumor. We have breast tissue that we are looking for, all right? So that brings us to 19125 in both A and B. So we know that we are looking for exactly what this code is reading, excision of a breast lesion identified by preoperative placement of this marker, radiologic marker to be specific. Yeah, that's what we had, the placement of that radiologic marker. All right, so we're gonna give that a light yes. And we already know it's gonna be a firm yes because that's all we've got remaining. This right here is, is, is pivotal. This is the sticking point. This 19285, placement of breast localization device. And while that happened, and it is true, who did that? Okay, if you, if, if, if you had chosen C, okay, why wouldn't it be C? Who placed that localization device? Well, the radiologist. Yeah, that's right, Natalie and Rasha. That's right. That thing just jumps out at you. It's like, hold on. It happens, but we're coding specifically for this surgeon. So yeah, that's for the radiologist. We simply need 19125 because we need the code for only the surgeon's ser um, services. So 19125 is it. All right. So there we go. You guys did great on this one. I don't know that any of you would need the screenshot other than to just remind yourself again, who, what, when, where, how, remember, who are you coding for? And they're gonna tell you, especially if they start doing stuff like that, you need to keep your eyes peeled, okay? All right, we're gonna keep on going. All right, I know you guys love the meaty ones. This is a meaty one, Miss Andre. Everybody needs to get their knife and fork out. Okay, we're gonna do it, guys. I'm gonna give you Two and a half minutes on this one, and your time will start after Ms. Andrea reads for you. All right, guys, we have A13152 with 11642 modifier 51 and C44.311. B13152 with 11442 modifier 51. 
C44.311 and C17313 with 13152 modifier 51 and C44.119. And lastly, we have D17311 with 13152 modifier 51 with C44.119. Operative report diagnosis is basal cell carcinoma. The procedure is Mohs micrographic excision of skin cancer tissue. The site is the face, left lateral canthus eyelid. Preoperative size is 0.8 centimeters. Indications for surgery, area of high recurrence, area of functional and or cosmetic importance. Discuss procedure, including alternative therapy, expectations, complications, and the possibility of a larger or deeper defect than expected requiring significant reconstruction. Patients' questions were answered. Local anesthesia, one-to-one -one marcaine and 1% 1 lidocaine with epinephrine sterile prep and drape. Stage one, the clinically apparent lesion was marked out with a small rim of normal appearing and excised down to subcutaneous fat level with a defect size of 1.2 centimeters. Hemostasis was obtained and a pressure bandage placed. The tissue was sent for slide preparation. Review of the slides show clear margins for the site. Repair was a complex repair. Repair of Mohs micrographic surgical defect. Wound margins were extensively undermined in order to mobilize tissue for closure. Hemostasis was achieved. Repair length 3.4 centimeters. A layered closure was performed. Multiple buried absorbable sutures were placed to reopose deep fat. The epidermis and dermis were reopposed using monofilament sutures. There were no complications. The patient tolerated the procedure well. Post procedure expectations, including discomfort management, wound care, and activity restrictions were reviewed. Written instructions with urgent contact numbers given. Follow up visit and suture removal in three to five days. What CPT and ICD 10 CM codes are reported? And you got this, coders.
right. How we doing, coders? I'm giving everybody time to get those answers in there. more more seconds but I think you guys all answered okay let's see all right we're gonna go ahead and, and get on down to business I'm loving these keywords. I'm loving these keywords, guys. Okay, let me bring my mic down. I'm I'm talking to you guys, but I'm looking in the chat as well. So now I'm ready to start to start talking about this thing. Okay, so we had a little bit of a split between A and D. All right, so how do we get here? We've got this basal cell carcinoma. The procedure is indeed Mohs. In the site is the face, the left lateral canthus of the eyelid, and this is a stage one, okay? The lesion has been excised down to the subcutaneous fat with a defect of 1.2 centimeters. The complex repair, okay? We have a repair. It was complex for the repair of this Mohs micrographic surgical defect with this closure and the repair length was 3.5. It was a layered closure. All right, so this drives us to answer D. How did we get here? How did we get here? All right, thank you, Miss Andrea for letting me know. Yeah, Miss Andrea was letting me know earlier on. You sound a little far away. I had that mic flipped up. Thank you, lady. Okay, here we go. We got the procedure, it's Mohs, yeah, and the repair is complex. We talk about keywords, these particular things, all of these things that we have highlighted are indeed important, but you'll hear me say uh, during your time with me in uh, your SSS studies that certain keywords are pivotal. And these two indeed are Mohs and complex repair. For code 13151, this is repair complex eyelids, nose, ears, and or lips, okay? It is of the eyelid, is this repair, okay? Eyelid, 2.6 to 7.5 centimeters. This repair length was indeed 3.4, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take that, that right there, okay? That looks good with that repair, all right? So, that, and this is indeed in all of them. So this right here, we know that's going to be a code that we're going to use, and we know why. Now we take a look at 11640. So this is for excision of this malignant lesion, margins of the face, the ears, the eyelids, all right? And it needs to be 0.5 centimeters or less, all right? So excise diameter of 1.2 to 2.0. The defect was 1.2. All right, but no, you're thinking, well, why aren't we taking it? Because it looks good, it looks good. Ah, look at there, you see that note right there? We're not gonna take it because the it is the correct size and location, but for a Mohs procedure, the removal of the gross tumor is included in the code. Okay, that's involved, it, it's included with the procedure. So it's bundled into that procedure. So, so that's why we're not gonna take uh, code 11642 because the Mohs procedure includes the removal of that gross tumor. So that eliminates A. We take a look at 11440, this, this particular uh, code family as well, and this is for excision of other benign lesion, the margins, yeah, again, eyelids, excise diameter of 1.2 to 2.0, okay? This is 11442, we have that here, but again, we're not gonna take this one. This one is incorrect twice over because indeed this is not only uh, included in the Mohs procedure, but this code is for a benign lesion, and we know that this lesion was indeed cancerous. So that one's incorrect. All right. Yeah, I know. I, I know, Natalie. This one right here, when you see it with the operative report, and it's like, man, are they sure it's, it's Mo's? 
Okay, so whenever you see it again, uh, keywords. I know you you would think it would be the opposite. Like they're trying to trick me. They're trying to trick me. Yeah, you you really have to be forensic with this one. It is indeed still a MOSE procedure. So then we move on. This leaves us with these two codes that are MOSE. Now, how do we choose between the two? What's the difference? We're going to take a look to see for code 17313. This is the most technique, but it is for the trunk, arms, or legs. We are in need of something that includes the eyelid. So 17313, yeah, that's incorrect. But code 17311, Mohs micrographic technique, including removal of gross tumor. Look at there. See, it's in the code language, including removal of the gross tumor, of all the gross tumor. That's why we wouldn't take these codes here when we are talking about a Mohs procedure. It's included. That technique includes the removal of that gross tumor. We're talking about the head, all right? because where can you find the eyelid? It would be in the head region. So depending on the code, then you've got you've to take that, okay? So the head, first stage, it's telling us right there, first stage, 17311, that's a good code, okay? We're gonna take it, that's for our Mohs procedure. And then complex repair, all right, now, now you're thinking, what about that complex repair? This is basal cell carcinoma. That's why it it like I said, that would that would throw you like, okay, they excise it, but again, that's including the, the gross tumor. All right, and here we're coding for that. Now I've got some other notes to give you. With this complex repair, okay, if a repair is performed, you're gonna use a separate repair flap or graph code. So we do know that a complex repair was performed. And so we're going to use a separate repair flap code. All right. We have a complex repair code. And again, make sure you put those FTRs on the proper page so that you can have all of these things at your fingertip. Okay. So you need, uh, which, which uh, screenshot would you like to get, Sonia? You want you want one that's clean, or do you want you want the the first um, screenshot? You let me know. Okay, the first the first explanation of this one, or was it from a previous uh, scenario? Oh, the one for A or B. Okay, okay, for this one. All right, hold on. Let me pause my screen and grab it again. Okay, that one right there is what you want. Okay, go ahead and grab that one. All right, I think a couple of you wanted this this A and B. All right, all right. Aisha, is that the one that you wanted as well? Okay, so grab that one. And you know what? I'm glad you guys asked that because um, go ahead before we go for, for each one. When we start this next scenario, go ahead and grab the screenshot. This is our next scenario. Go ahead and grab this screenshot. And then after I give you your explanations, grab the screenshot that has the explanation. So you can go back and you can rework this code, these codes and really take time to just let it simmer and resonate with you. Okay. All right. We're going to, we're going to keep on moving. We're going to keep on moving. All right, Miss Andrea, you have the floor after she reads, then I'm going to give you two and a half minutes and I'll give you a little over if I see you guys are still, still have answers coming in. Everybody take a breath. You guys are are doing a fantastic job. Good to have you with us today. All right, Miss Andrea, you got the floor, lady. All right, we have A11900 with J3300 and L90.5, B11900 with J3301 with L91.0, C11951 with J3300 and L91.0, and D11950 with J3301 and L90.5. The patient is here to follow up for a keloid excise from his neck in November of last year. He believes it is coming back. 
He does have a recurrence of the keloid on the superior portion of the scar. Because the keloid is still small, options of an injection or radiation to the area were discussed. It was agreed our next course should be a Kenalog injection. Risks associated with the procedure were discussed with the patient. Informed consent was obtained. The area was infiltrated with 1.5 cc's of medication. This was a mixture of 1 cc of Kenalog 10 and 0.5 cc's of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine. He tolerated the procedure well. What codes are reported? And you got this, coders. All right, coders, I think most of you've gotten your answers in there. I'm taking a taking a look here. All right, we are going to unpack this. All right. All right, so I see you guys in this in this chat, so i'm I'm answering you guys, okay? so. <laughs> All right, so let me get rolling on this thing. So, so we'll we'll see how we got to to be. All right, how did we get there? How did we get there, guys? All right, so here we go. We've got this follow up for this keloid that was excised from the neck. All right, so there we go. Look, I I, I remembered this time. Let me catch them up to where I am. All right, so the answer is B. All right, let me go. Let me go back one. So you'll see that I said B. All right, here we go. All right, the answer is indeed B. It's all right. I'm gonna make. I'm. I'm gonna get you there, Renata. You and, and, and I'll, I'm gonna get everybody there. Here we go. Follow up for this keloid excised from the neck. 
uh, this person has recurrence of this keloid, all right? And we have this injection of Kenalog, uh, one cc, and then we have 0.5 cc's of 1% uh, lidocaine with epinephrine. We have uh, an injection of an intralesional uh, in up to and including seven lesions. So 11900, that is what's happening with when you inject a, a keloid scar. All right, it is it is injection of an intralesional uh, something that is intralesional. Okay, so they're they're injecting it into the the keloid. All right, so don't let this part fool you. They're they're following up with the excision, but the keloid is recurring. So now they're going to inject kenalog into the keloid. So that's what makes it intralesional. The keloid is a lesion. The injection. It's right there in your code. It's going to go into that keloid scar. So when we look here, code 11950, this is for a subcutaneous injection of a filling material. If nothing else, even if you're not sure about what is a subcutaneous injection of a filling material, you really don't have to know what that is because when you read the scenario, you didn't see anything about that, but you did hear about an injection, okay? So, so I'm going to impress upon you that even if you read something and you're not clear about what every single thing means, that's also part of pulling out keywords and matching it up to what you're reading in your code language. And we don't have anything in this scenario that is mentioning a subcutaneous injection of a filling material. They're even giving you an example like collagen. They're in fact injecting kenalog. All right. So both of these codes, because this parent code with this common code language is incorrect, thus C and D is off the table. All right, yeah, okay. I've got some, I've got some got it. I've got some got it. Okay. All right. How we feeling, guys? All right. So everybody's letting that part sink in. How we doing, Miss Amy, Renata? All right. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. That's right. The keloid is the is the lesion, Aisha. Okay. Yeah. That's right, Amy. I know you get to go in so fast. Like this is easy because it's just these two. But slow down and really hone in. Okay. All right. And then we go ahead. You guys weren't weren't stumped with this part. Uh, we have the we're coding for actually the injection, and we got to because in this case we've got to break the tie. So we've got to pull out that Higpix manual. We know that J three three zero zero. This is for triamcinolone acetonide preservative free. But right here we need J three three zero one kenalog. That's what we need, and so. That is indeed in B. We get rid of that one, and there we go. You know, I'm just doing this for completeness sake because, like I told you, as soon as you arrive at the correct answer using mainly the CPT manual, you see we had to had to just dot real quick into that Higpix manual, but that's okay in order to break the tie. We wouldn't even have to touch ICD-10, but just for, again, completeness sake, uh, L90.5 wouldn't be it. Okay, but L91.0 would be, and we see it's for hypertrophic scar, and it gives us some code language here specifically for a keloid scar. So we're going to take that one, and that's how we get there. That's how we got to be. All right, so how we doing, guys? All right, did I, I hope I put the pieces together for you. Go ahead and grab that screenshot. I'm glad to hear good from you, Soma. How are the rest of my coders doing, okay? So definitely read that thing. If you're not sure, if you don't see anything in the scenario with these words that match up, this one you did, okay? You're going to have to go with it. All right, grab that screenshot again if you need it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move us on. All right, you guys got your forensic glasses on. You got some glass wipes. I've got my glasses over here too, okay? So we're going to keep it going. I'm going to give you this one here, and, and you guys are, are going to do some fantastic things. I know you are. All right, Miss Andrea, you've got the floor. All right, we have A13131 with 11441 modifier 51 and C44.309. B, 13131 
with 11441 modifier 51 and D49.2, C12051 with 11441 modifier 51 and D22.39, D12051 with 11641 modifier 51 and D22.39. The patient has a suspicious lesion of the left jawline. Clinical diagnosis of this lesion is unknown, but due to the appearance, malignancy is a realistic concern. The lesion was excised into the subcutaneous fat measuring 0.8 centimeters and margins of 0.1 centimeters on each side. Hemostasis was achieved using light pressure. The wound was closed in layers unit using 5.0 monocryl and 6.0 proline. Pathology revealed a nevus with clear margins. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? You got this, coders. How we doing, coders? I think you guys are doing just great. I see you guys getting better, getting stronger. This is good stuff. I love it, love it, love it. And I think some of you are getting the, the hang of really honing in on certain keywords that are indeed pivotal. All right, that are indeed pivotal. All right, so. How did we get to this answer? I think many of you already knew the gig was up. It is C. Yeah, it's C. All right. So 
Here we go. I, I'm still answering here in the chat. All right. Now, some of you picked up on the fact of, of how to narrow it down uh, a bit uh, on almost on site, pretty much. So we have this suspicious lesion of the left jawline and, and there is an appearance of malignancy um, that it, it's causing some realistic concerns. So this lesion was excised and it is measuring uh, 0 0.8 centimeters and the margins are 0.1 centimeters on each side. The wound was closed in layers using uh, 5 monocryl and pathology revealed a nevus with clear up margins. So the excise diameter, we're gonna get the measurement of uh, this, this particular lesion. So we have the size of the lesion plus the margin times two, and we have, that gives us 0.8 plus 0.2 because we are multiplying the 0.1. It's on each side. Remember when you start talking about the sides, you gotta multiply by two. That's what gives us indeed one centimeter. Um, code 131, 13131, that is for a complex repair. All right, did we have a complex repair? No, let me go back. You see how I highlighted there? We're, it's closed in layers. So if it's closed in layers, we know that it would be an intermediate uh, repair. Okay, so we're going to take that off the board and we're going to remove B as well. I love when we can get two for one. All right, we're down to 50-50. I love it. I like those odds. Yeah, again, because it was closed in layers, we know that it is intermediate. So this takes us here. This is the sticking point now. All right, we've got to break the tie between, there we go, repair. It is of the face. Okay. We've got this nevus and it's 2.5 centimeters or less. We know that it, that it is because it's one centimeter. All right. Now let's move on. There we go. Let me go back. All right. Excision malignant excise 0.1 to 1.0. All right. Well, we excised the lesion, but was it malignant? Was it malignant? No, it was removed. It's benign. All right. And it had the appearance of malignancy. Yeah, don't let that. That's right. Amy's like, no, that's right, Roger. No, it had the appearance of malignancy. And indeed, it came back as a nevus, and a nevus is benign. So here we have excision, other benign lesion, including the margins, except for skin, skin tag. And we know that we are talking about the face. So this code family. Underneath the 11400, we're going to take 11441 because it is for an excise diameter of 0.6 to 1 centimeter, and we are right on it. So we're going to take that one. That is how we got to see. It's closed in layers. We know it's an intermediate repair, and we know that this is for a benign lesion. All right. So you could just, you could almost code this one. Um, on, on, on site, once you, once you get it down to here, you actually can code it on site. Once you eliminate these two, because this here was for a, re, a repair that was complex, we got here. The next two codes, one is for benign, one is for malignant. Remember those code series that start 116, those are for malignant lesions. And some of you alluded to that in the chat. So those little things right there, anything that will, you know, decrease the number of page turns, you want to do it. So once you get here, you can look here and say, oh, that's for malignant. This is benign. I know because it said the appearance of malignancy and also a nevus. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Just suspicious, Renata. See, they, they think they trying to trick people, the appearance of malignant malignancy, but it was indeed not. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna keep it rolling. I got some more for you. If you need to get the screen shot, go ahead, and we're gonna keep it moving. We got some more good stuff for you. Yeah, I know, I know. I just just take a breath, y'all. I know you just like if she don't move on from these big ones, but I want to be sure y'all just knock this thing out of the park when you get there on that exam. Okay, these are multi layered. So when you get things that are in between, that's my my rationale. That's the method to my madness. When you're able to break these things down, anything else in between, you got it. All right, Miss Andrea, you got the floor. Come on, coders, let's do this. 
All right, we have A, 15220 with modifier 58, 15004 with modifiers 58 and 51, L97.421, E11.621, B, 15120 modifier 58, 15004 with modifiers 58 and 51, E11.621 and L97.421. C, 15950 modifier 78, 15004 with modifiers 78 and 51, E11.9 and I70.244, D, 11044 with modifier 78, 15120 with modifier 78 and 51, 15004 modifier 78, E11.621 and L97.421. Operative report. Preoperative diagnosis is diabetic foot ulceration. Postoperative operative diagnosis is diabetic foot ulceration. Operation performed is debridement and split thickness autografting of left midfoot. Anesthesia is general endotracheal. Indications for procedure. This patient with multiple complications from type 2 diabetes has developed skin ulcerations which were debrided and homografted last week. The homograft is taken quite nicely. The wounds appear to be fairly clean. He is ready for autografting. Description of procedure. After informed consent, the patient is brought to the operating room and placed in the supine position on the operating table. Anesthetic monitoring was instituted. General anesthesia was induced. The left lower extremity is prepped and draped in a sterile fashion. Staples were removed and the homograph was debrided from the surface of the wounds. One wound appeared to have healed. The remaining two appeared to be relatively clean. We debrided this sharply with good bleeding in all areas. Hemostasis was achieved with pressure, bovi cautery, and warm saline soaked sponges. With good homeos homostasis, a donor site was then obtained on the left anterior thigh, measuring less than 100 centimeters squared. The wounds were then grafted with a split thickness autograph that was harvested with a patch of brown dermatome set at 12,000 of an inch thick. This was meshed 1.5 to 1. The donor site was infiltrated with buvivacaine and dressed. The skin graft was then applied over the wound, measured approximately 60 centimeters squared in dimension on the left midfoot. This was secured into place with skin staples and was then dressed with Atacote 18s, Curlex incorporating a catheter and gel pad. The patient tolerated the procedure well. The right foot was redressed with skin lubricant, sterile gauze, and ACE wrap. Anesthesia was reversed. The patient was brought back to the ICU in satisfactory condition. What CPT and ICD-10-CM codes are reported? And you got this, coders.
All right, I see some good stuff coming through. I do, I do. Going to give you guys just a few more seconds. And then we will get rolling. I see some good, some good keywords in there. If you hadn't slid that answer in there, go ahead and do it. I know you guys are working so hard and it shows. I know you are, okay? If, if you're like I was, I'll be sitting there like just writing, just writing. <laughs> All right, here we go. And yeah, I mean it, y'all. This CPT cone thing, it looks good on you. Y'all are doing some good, good stuff. All right, you guys already got that. The answer is indeed B. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I'm going to see if I can impart a little something uh, to you so that you can file it away and use it for anything else that, that you see that, that is very similar to this scenario to help you stay on track. I think you guys had those FTRs on your proper code pages. And if so, that is pivotal. It's like your roadmap. Now. I like to give you tips on how to get there real fast because indeed, while I stress, a, stress to you understanding why a code is what it is, I wanna show you how to narrow some things down when you're on that exam as well because you gotta get, no matter how much coding knowledge you have, you have to be very quick and very efficient on the exam, which is why we time you, okay? so. Let's, we're going to use these, these uh, modifiers. If you don't like modifiers, you will like them before you leave me because this is going to help you if you have modifiers in certain situations. Well, look at this. This 58 modifiers for a staged or related procedure or service and 78 is for an unplanned return to the operating room or procedure room. Well, this uh, procedure here, we have this, this, this uh, person with diabetes type two, and these ulcerations were debrided and homographed last week. Yeah, last week. That's right, Natalie, C and D. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, we gotta get rid of those because this was staged. So we would be looking between A and B, all right? So yeah, immediately, we can get rid of those. Yeah, boom, boom, get out of there, get out of there. I got to focus now. Let's focus, okay? All righty. So, so what we're coding for is that previous wound prep, the holograph or homograph, and this is a split thickness graph. So diabetic foot ulcer, debridement and split thickness autografting of that midfoot. Uh, this is from complications due to type 2 diabetes. Uh, they've developed these skin ulcerations. So we're going to have to get this debrided and homograph last week because as you know, uh, if you have been around any form of healthcare, diabetics have a difficult time um, with healing, with wound healing. So they are now ready for this autografting. So we're going to go in here and this homograph has been debrided. All right. And we debrid that thing down. And then we have good homostasis of this donor site from the left anterior thigh that is less than 100 centimeters squared, okay? And then we're going to graph this split thickness autograph, and it's going to be harvested. And the skin graft is measuring approximately 60 uh, centimeters squared of the left foot. Well, for code 11044, Right here, this is debridement down to the bone. I'm just giving you the specific codes of why this wouldn't be, okay? We've eliminated it with uh, these two modifiers, but I'm just giving you the code language that's specific for the code. Uh, so we wouldn't use that because we didn't debris down to the bone. So that's why that wouldn't go as well. Now, here's this FTR. Remember, debridement and the harvest is bundled. All right, so while we're harvesting some things and, and we're debriding some things, uh, they're harvested. When we look at code 195950, that's excision of a trochanteric pressure ulcer. That's why we wouldn't take that, okay? So I'm just giving you specifically what those codes are. Just in case the modifiers didn't really spur you on, uh, you could get there along with the codes, and I want to be sure you're clear with that. We did not breed, debride all the way down to the bone, okay? We didn't go quite that far, um, but we did uh, also not have this 
going on with the pressure also. So let's get here though. Let's get on down here. This code 15220, this is for a full thickness graft. Yeah, we, we need a split thickness graft. All right, so already that's gone. See, split thickness of the left midfoot. Boom, gone. This leaves us with just this. All right, 15120 split thickness autograph. We know we've got what we need by way of the feet right there. First hundred centimeters or less. All right, we've got first hundred centimeters or less. Yeah, this measured approximately 60 square centimeters. That's for the split thickness autograph. Okay, the 15004, this is for the surgical prep, all right, for the recipient site. So we have to code for that, and that's of the feet. All right, we're going to take that, surgical prep, and then the donor site that's telling us where it was obtained. It's less than 100 uh, centimeters squared, all right? There we go, modifier. Surgical prep was last week. We had multiple procedures, but we were in the same body area. So that's why we have the 58 and the 51. And here, this is for completeness sake. We're done. You're on that exam and you're done. Don't, don't open that ICD-10 book unless you have to. In this case, we wouldn't have to, but for completeness sake, we know that this E11.621, that's for the type 2 diabetes with that foot ulcer. And then the L97.421 is for this non pressure chronic ulcer, all right? Limited to the breakdown of skin, and that's definitely what's happening. That's how we get to be, all right? So how we doing, guys? I want you to grab a screenshot if you, if you need to, all right? I hope that that helps you honing in on the modifiers. You know right off, boom, that's gone, and you get right here, and then you can eliminate it really quick because this is this was not a split thickness the 15220, but this one was, all right? So I've got one good. I've got a smiley face from Miss Amy. Jelini says, good. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet of you, so much good to hear. All right, I appreciate that. All right, grab that screenshot. We're going to keep it rolling, Miss Andrea. We've got to get into some more stuff. You can grab your screenshot again if you want it here. I put some things, um, wanted to Peel your attention to the remember that debridement is bundled. You're going to hear me repeating stuff because these things are pivotal. You can put it in red or something like that on your book. Um, just things to just guide your eye because when you're crunched for time and if and to kind of keep your nerves at bay, you want to have little roll markers to just kind of keep you settled. Okay, that debridement that harvest is bundled, um, and then. It's bundled unless you have prolonged cleansing, okay? If we have time, I'll get into one to show you what that looks like, but but just so you know that. But just remember, most times it's bundled unless you, you see something in that scenario where there is prolonged cleansing, then that's going to be separate. But no worries. Just, just remember this part in there, okay? All right. So you want the one with the, the one before, Aisha? You want that screenshot? Give me one second. I will go back for you. All right, that one right there, okay. All right, you know what, just breathe. Just breathe for calming the nerves, you know, and, and then I, I do a lot of uh, kind of doodling on, on, on my paper, start writing. Uh, when, you get, when you get on there, start writing. Just start writing what, what you uh, are gonna be, gonna be be coding for, start writing it out. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, before I share my screen again, let me, I wanna move ahead to one in particular that I really wanna be sure that we get to. So let me, let me find it real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put us there. And then if we, we have time, then I'll move through some others. Okay, so I'm gonna try to squeeze in at least two more. I might try to squeak in three, but I know two because we have the other class that comes in after us. But Miss Natalie, yeah, just breathe. For me, I start writing. And personally, I start praying as well to just kind of get myself centered but you guys are going to be fine, but just start reading and start writing, okay? And if you've ever been to boot camp, if you haven't gone yet, hey, get in there with Miss Rochelle and I will give you some additional pointers. All right, you ready, Miss Andrea? You stay ready, and I know you're ready to do this. Come on, lady. Yes, ma'am. Let's get it, coders. All right, we have 
A15002 with 15004, 15100, 15220, 15221 times 3, 15240. B15220, 15221, 15240, modifier 51, 15100 with modifier 51, 15004 with modifiers 59 and 80, 15002 with modifiers 59 and 80. C15240, 15220 times 3 with modifier 59, 15221 times 3 with modifier 59, 15004 modifier 59, 15002 with modifier 59, and 15040 modifier 59. Lastly, we have D15220 with 15221 times 3 with modifier 51, 15240 modifier 51, 15004 with modifier 51, and 15002 with modifier 51. An iron worker was working on the structure of a new skyscraper. While using a blowtorch to mold the rebar in position, he accidentally dropped the torch, engulfing his lower extremities. His co-workers immediately extinguished the flames. The patient was taken via life flight to the hospital, and upon examination, the ED physician determined that the patient will require skin grafts on both, of both of his legs and feet. The left leg required 40 square centimeters full thickness graft, and the right leg required a 40 square centimeter split thickness graft. Both feet required 10 square centimeter full thickness grafts each. The skin was harvested from the patient's trunk and buttocks to cover all of the wounds. The surgical sites of both legs and feet were prepared by the assistant surgeon. Which procedure codes best describe this encounter? Take your time and you got this, coders.
are we doing coders? I don't want to stop you guys from, from thinking it through. I'm going to give you guys maybe about 15, 20 more seconds, and then I want to start seeing what you got. All right, I see some answers in there. You guys were teetering between B's and D's in the end. And, and, and Miss Amy, you found the secret sauce. Yeah, that's right, Sonia. You just found the secret sauce too. All right, so before I spill the beans, do I have any more takers? I see just a few more coming in there. All right, and great keywords, guys. I'm liking the keywords that you guys have in there. And I'm going to show you some things that, again, some key, all keywords are helpful. It's just some are pivotal. <laughs> all right, there we go. B, yeah, it, it, it B. I know you're like, what? I'm sweating over here. I tell me, what? How do we get to B? All right, here we go. All right, so I know you're like, you know, look here, Mister Mika. How how am I solving this on site? Did you see this thing? Do you see all these codes here? All right, let me show you. I, I know, Sonia, I know. <laughs> All right, here we go. The surgical sites, who were they prepared by? <laughs> Renata, we can't have that. We can't have it. <laughs> the surgical sites, who were they repaired? Who were they prepared by? They were prepared by the assistant surgeon. So that's right, Washa, the assistant surgeon. So if the assistant surgeon repaired this site, and I know you got these FTRs on that page. I know you do, Renata. Yeah, what modifier would be needed for the assistant surgeon? That's right, Soma. Yeah, Rasha. I got any more takers. Go ahead and flip over to that page and, and tell me. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Natalie, Renata, that modifier 80. See, I wouldn't do you like that. Modifier 80. Look at there, boom, which one has modifier 80? And the only one with modifier 80 is B, okay? Now, I'm gonna tell you how we got there and give you the rationale behind it, but whenever I can find something that you can tease away and get that answer real quick, I'm gonna give it to you. So you can just have that in your back pocket. That's why I tell you, notice those modifiers, okay? Yeah, that can be, yeah, it can literally, be done on site. This one could be, Renata, once you get there and you're looking at it and you're going through, you see those modifiers, you start checking, okay, what am I What am I coding for? All right, but it, it's worth taking a look at it to, to kind of steer you. All right, so we have the surgical sites. They've been prepared by that assistant surgeon. Let's take a look at what these uh, FTRs talk about. All right, so the lower extremities, they've been engulfed. He's going to require skin grafts on both his legs and feet. The left leg requires 40 square centimeters of a full thickness graft, and the right leg requires 40 centimeters of a split thickness graft. Both feet require 10 square centimeters of full thickness grafts, both, both feet. And then the skin was harvested from the trunks, from the trunks, the trunk and the buttocks. Here we go. All right, so for code 15220, yeah, that is indeed a full thickness graph and, and it's been, uh, the surgical site's been prepared, okay, by the assistant surgeon. All right, so we're gonna code according to the body area. So we need to, to take an inventory. 
what gets the full thickness graph? Well, the left leg, all right? So we, we're gonna need this code for the full thickness graph with the left uh, leg. So we're gonna need here, full thickness, legs 20 square centimeters or less. Well, we're coding for what? We're coding for 40. So we're gonna need the 15220, but we're also gonna need this add-on code, all right? for for each additional 20 centimeters, remember there's that language you'll see with quite a few codes in your CPT manual or part thereof. So that lets you know it doesn't have to be exactly 20 square centimeters. It didn't have to necessarily be 40, but even if it was 35, 33, 32, we're gonna need this add-on code because we're gonna need it for everything that's over 20 square centimeters or part thereof, all right? Anything over 20 centimeters, even if it was 21, we're going to need this add-on code, all right? I'm just driving that point home. So here we go. So we're going to need 15220 and 15221, all right? Now, what about for the full thickness graph? We had a full thickness graph, all right, of the feet, okay? So we're going to need 15224, 15240, I'm sorry, 15240, we're going to need that, all right, because that's for the feet, all right, both feet, 10 square centimeters of a full thickness graph each, all right, so this 15240, all right, full thickness uh, graph, all right, you wouldn't use this multiplier right here. OK, this wouldn't be your lead code because this code, this particular procedure is less complex, so it wouldn't be first. You wouldn't use a multiplier uh, with this, the 15220 times three. We're not doing all that. What we need is in the code language. So when you start seeing them adding all that kind of stuff, you already know I wouldn't use a multiplier. The code language is taking care of of, of what I need right here. OK, so. We keep on going, all right, add on code. You can append what? A modifier 51. Remember I told you that? So that's a way you could get rid of that one, okay? All right, now we're gonna keep going. All right, this is the graph for uh, the left leg, 15220 and 15221. This one is the, um, the full thickness graph of the left and right feet. And then we've got, there we go, right leg required there, split thickness, okay? So now we've got the split thickness graph. I didn't forget about it. All right, we've got the split thickness graph there. First hundred, all right, they're needing just 40 square centimeters, so that takes care of that. And then we've got the surgical prep from the assistant surgeon, okay? And so that takes care of 15004, surgical prep in creation. The feet, we need that, or multiple digits, but we're doing it for the feet, 100 square centimeters, all right? We need that, 80, assistant surgeon, all right? And then surgical prep for what? The legs, because he was burned on his legs and feet. So the assistant surgeon had to prep for that as well. This wouldn't be the lead code, this right here would be the lead code. That's the most complex procedure as well as teasing out this modifier 80. But I wanted you to know how to how to take it apart, uh, even if you didn't have that 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 sweet that 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 little sweet nugget right there of that modifier 80. You're just gonna take your inventory just like you see I have it here. You got the full thickness. You just take inventory and take your time and just walk yourself through. Use these FTRs. Again, here is your roadmap. Was there room prep? Yeah, there was room prep because the assistant surgeon did it. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to code according to the body size. That's what we did. We had the right, the right and left legs and both uh, right and left feet. So we're going to code according to the body area and the size of the wound or the graft, okay, in this case. So grab your screenshot if you need it. We've got 10 more minutes, so I'm going to um, give you one more, all right? So take a breath. 
All right. So we're going to we're going to do this one and we're going to we're going to close it out with this one. So, uh, Miss Andrea, if you could come to the floor and read us out on this one and then then we'll get rolling for the, our last scenario. All righty. We have a one one zero four two B one one zero one zero C one one zero zero five and D one one zero four four. A 12 year old male was race walking at the regional track and field finals com competition. As the race walker was turning the bend, he collided with another com competitor, causing him to fall, where he landed on top of rocks and mulch. The boy sustained a 20 square centimeter open, heavily contaminated wound to the abdomen. The ED physician debrided the abdominal wound down to the subcutaneous level. The ED physician was satisfied that the wound was well cleaned and without infection. He discharged the patient home without antibiotics. Which procedure code best describe this encounter? You got it, coders. All right, coders, if you have not slid that answer in there, go ahead and slide it in there. I'm seeing some great uh, keywords. Um, I see Shalini in there getting some, some keywords slid in there. And Miss Natalie and Rasha, you guys are doing amazing. And even for those of you who have arrived at the, an the right answer and I don't see the keywords, I know you got some keywords because you arrived at the right answer. And I know you're, you're working frantically. So like I said, I know you're putting the keywords on your paper as you're thinking it through. Um, after you put your answer in, you can always double back if time permits and just let us know what your thinking was by just jotting a few of them in there. No, no 
no worries, y'all. All right, so you guys already figured it out. Yeah, the answer is A. So how did we get here? I'm just going to run through our keywords. They're 12 years old. Um, they have a 20 square centimeter open, heavily contained, contaminated wound. Heavily contaminated wound. Um, it's along the abdomen and it's been debrided. Okay, the abdominal wound has been debrided down to the subcutaneous level and it's been cleaned well and it is without in Infection. Yeah, so debridement of the skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscle, and fascia, necrotizing soft tissue infection. What did I just say, y'all? I said this thing was not infected. So yeah, we are not going to take anything from this code series. So uh, the abdominal wall, yeah, right location, but there's no necrotizing soft tissue infection. So we're going to take a hard pass on 11005. We take a look now. We have debrided to the, ab the abdominal wound, was debrided down to what? The subcutaneous level. This is debridement, including removal of farm material at the site of an open fracture. Oh, this was not an, uh, a fracture of any kind. This was uh, simply a wound, okay, that, that, that this person uh, sustained, this, this little 12 year old boy, because he has fallen on some rocks. So we're going to take a pass, a hard one at that. On 11010, we're going to take B off the table as well. This leaves us with both A and D. So we have 11044. This is debridement all the way down to the bone. Oh, man. I mean, he hurt himself, but it was not that deep. Literally, it was not that deep. So we're going to take a, a pass on that because, as you notice, I have honed in on the fact that this wound although in the abdominal area was simply down to the subcutaneous level, not to the bone. So yeah, take that off. There we go. That leaves us with A and many of you got there. Hey, I love it. I see you guys working. Yeah, debridement, subcutaneous tissue. That's what we have right there. It does include the epidermis and the dermis. If that were performed, this is for the first 20 square centimeters or less. And that's what we have, 20 square centimeters. Yeah, it ticks all of the boxes. That's how we got there. We're not going to keep on going. There we go. If you need to get a screenshot, go ahead and get that screenshot. Hey, you guys have done an amazing job. I always have plenty, plenty, plenty of scenarios, but we don't have time to keep on going. I got to move out of the way for the next class. You are so welcome, Natalie, so much. Yeah, please leave Miss Andrea and I your feedback. We want to help you and your feedback enables AMCI to continue to deliver quality classes for you deserving coders. It helps your instructor help you. No feedback means no good. We can do a lot of things, y'all, but we cannot read minds, all right? I want to make good use of your time. And indeed, that is why your feedback is important. We want to continue to bring it every time you guys tune in and sign in and you give us your time, okay? This is prime time, like I said. Saturday, hey, we appreciate you. I am humbled that you have spent this time with both Miss Andra and myself. Please enjoy your weekend. I hope that we see you next week. It has been our pleasure. Miss Andra, come on to the floor and tell them I do. <laughs> come on, lady. Coders, you guys did amazing, amazing work today. Thank you so much for joining us. And I will, we will see you next weekend. Have a great weekend and stay safe. All right. Thank you, Miss Andrea. I so appreciate you being right here. She's my wingman, y'all. I know I can always depend on Miss Andrea. You are appreciated as well, young lady. And coders, enjoy your day. You guys take a breath. You've got this. Continue to just work at it. Be consistent. Just one code at a time, one step at a time, and you'll get to that goal. All right. We'll see you again soon. You guys have a beautiful weekend.